The Small Business Show, episode 358 for Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. <laughs> Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing every week, every day of every week is in fact how it goes. Our sponsors for this episode include coinbase.com slash SBS, where you can get 10 bucks in free Bitcoin, and napjitsu.com slash SBS, where you can save 30% off your first order of their cool stuff. We'll talk more in depth about each of those shortly here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. That's cool. We can, you can buy crypto and then take a nap. That's, that's I, and that's let good. your crypto do whatever two it's going to do like while you're sleeping. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Two things I like a lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shannon, I need some business therapy today. All right. I'm up for okay. it. Let's do it, man. I'm always interested in talking uh, about these things. Yeah. So yeah. And this is just personally, right? So we are helping each other out. At, we're helping each other out and hopefully helping all of you out out there. And I, I will say before we get into this feedback at businessshow.co is where we want to hear from you. We really, this is, uh, this is what we do here is we help each other. So I, I am taking the, the role of the one that's coming to us for help today. Uh, I like it. Right. So, um, I need help managing my own expectations. Let me let me get into this uh, a little. I'll I'll, I'll specify. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. I'm not a perfect person. I'm definitely aware of all kinds of things that I let slip through the cl- the cracks. Right. In, in fact, I, I think that's a big part of learning how to be efficient is figuring out which things you don't have to do. Right. I mean, that's a that's a valuable life lesson is learning when you mean when you mean don't have to do you mean that you could have someone else do for you or just don't need to be done or that don't need to be done. Like what corners can you cut to get from, you know, where you are to where, you know, the end of your story is. Right. I like it. I like it. You know, I, I was talking to years ago when my son was applying to actually to a private high school. He was talking with someone at this school that he, an administrator at the school that he had known for years. And they said, yeah, the workload here is really tough. Uh, but that's part of what we're here for is to teach you how, what, what work actually needs to be done so that you can, you can be productive. And I thought, wow, what an interesting thing. You know, I, it, at points in my life, I felt guilty about, you know, choosing, which things I'm going to do on any given day. And I'm always prioritizing, right. You know, and, and, and yet I am a productive person. And when I heard him say that, I was like, great. Okay. That makes sense. Like you, you learn how to do that. And I, I I really think that that, in fact, I think that is at the essence of the difference between being busy and being productive is learning to choose which things you, you do each day. Yeah. Along the same lines, I think uh, shortcuts are, a much maligned um, uh, uh, method of getting things done that can help you save a lot of time and help you pick out things that you don't have to do. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Shortcuts is another way of, of talking about this. I like that because shortcuts sounds positive as opposed to skipping something, which is a negative thing. So with that in mind, I get it. I do it. I understand the value of it. Um, And I really don't see myself as any smarter than the people who work for me. In fact, I try to make it the opposite. I I like to have people who are better at things that, especially at the things that they're doing that I am right. I I don't always succeed at that. I am a perfectionist. I have flaws in that regard and we'll get into some of those here, but, but that's sort of the goal. And I, I get that really, I'm just somebody who grinds it out and makes it happen. uh, And that's fine. I, I have no problems with that. However, um, I routinely find myself frustrated with people who don't, who in my eyes don't do at least as much as I do because I know I'm taking shortcuts. So yeah, I'm already taking shortcuts. And if you're doing less than in, if in my opinion, you're doing less than me, that's frustrating to me. So maybe a better way to phrase this is, People who take different shortcuts than me, right? If their their priorities 
and their choices are different than mine. Now, I know we're all different people. This is why I'm bringing this as business therapy. I'm laying on the couch here. I understand that some of the things I'm saying are contradictory to one yeah, I, I have lots of questions <laughs> popping up, but I want to let you get okay. through this first. You know, so <laughs> my, 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 my frustration sort of manifests as, you know, if I'm doing it, then you should be doing at least that much too. And it drives me crazy when people don't at least do the things that I'm doing. Because I feel like I'm doing... Like in my mind, I'm always doing the bare minimum, right? To to get it done. I, I you know, I'm not wasting my time doing extra stuff. I figure out what the essence is and I do that, and that's how I remain productive. And this is what drives me to micromanage people. And I always say to people when I hire them, listen, I don't like to micromanage people. I'm guessing you are someone who does not like to be micromanaged because I have yet to meet that person. And so if either of us notices me micromanaging you, that's a problem that we both want to solve. I'm saying that out loud up front. You know, it, I do yeah, not okay. enjoy. I don't want that to be the default for us. So if either one of us notices it, we both have permission to bring it up right away. Yeah, well, it's an indicator that there's something's not working. That's right? exactly it. That it right. right. This is not how right. things are supposed to be. So let's fix it. Yep. And let that be, like you said, the indicator, the litmus test. I like it. And, and, and so, th but this is the, this is the thing more often than anything else that drives me to want to micromanage someone. It's like, well, if you're not yeah. doing it this way, how are you actually going to get it done? I know that I'm not right about this, but I also know that this is how I feel. So hence business therapy. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I, I when you posted this into Slack, as we often start to discussing topics, you know, for the show, uh, I immediately said, "Oh, I share that same trait." You know, I, sure. I, I often feel the same way, uh, and so, you know, I want to do a little research on on why and um, see if it's common. And I think it is pretty common for um, leaders, whether it's small business owners or whatever, to to feel this way. Um, the, and I think that's the first step to uh, trying to get this figured out is that it's inevitable that being disappointed is just going to happen, right? Because <laughs> it's just going to happen. But okay. on the flip side, All right. you, you, you need to be self-aware that you will certainly disappoint other people in various ways. Of uh, I am right? super aware of that. Yes. And I know you are. I can tell from the way you're talking about it. Yeah. And, and I, I try to be as well. Um, it doesn't mean and, I, I'm aware of it every single time that I do it. I'm aware oh yeah, that, course, that I have disappointed people and I will continue to do so. That's right. Yeah, I've yeah. been shocked a few times in my life by having people kind of call me out and yeah. I've been like, whoa, I had no idea that, that you know, because you just kind of get moving forward and you think that, especially as you're the leader, you're the owner, and you're just moving forward going, okay, well, here's the benchmarks I've set for myself and I'm knocking these out. But along the way, you could be disappointing people other ways that you you know you you need to kind of learn because it does impact how they perform as well. So right. my take on this from a from a small business owner uh, is learning how to managing your expectations of other people. Ooh, and and, and that's and that's going to be the title of a, of this episode um, because oh, oh, wait, okay, but hang on, managing your expectations of other people. Yeah, this reframes this. Yes, it does. I, I had written it down in our, you know, agenda, which becomes our show notes, but is a a malleable, evolving document, right? Until it gets yep. published. In fact, sometimes it even evolves after, after. it's been published. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, the way it exists at this moment in time, and it's about to change because you said it better, was managing people who are differently efficient. So I was still trying to make it positive, right? Like they're they're yeah. efficient oh, yeah. in their way, but really, this isn't about managing them it's about managing my expectations of other people i that like this is correct and all right i think so, that's where it starts now there, there is a lot of things or many things beyond our control but i of course truthfully you can only control yourself so no i like uh, this right so, i, I so. want to let people this is great so this is we've set it up here shannon yeah i want to i want to let people i want to let this settle in think for us all this. Yeah. Because the next thing that I want to do is talk about our two sponsors for this episode, if that's okay with you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, if you've been looking to level up your financial portfolio, it's always good to diversify, right? 
Why not think about cryptocurrency? Backed by the world's leading investors, our sponsor Coinbase keeps your portfolio safe and secure while letting you add crypto into your mix. I've been using Coinbase for years for holding my crypto and trading crypto and things like that. The platform is super easy to use. They are trusted by many, not just me, but lots of others as well. And they make it super easy to buy, sell, and even spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market, and they make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and their mobile app is fantastic. So you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. I'm always using their app to like, you know, check how things are doing because that's what I like to do. Uh, so, you know, whether you're looking to diversify, just getting started or searching for a better way to access crypto markets, start today with Coinbase because for a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at our link, coinbase.com slash SBS. Sign up at coinbase.com slash SBS for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash SBS just for you. And our thanks to Coinbase for sponsoring this episode. Listen, you know that Shannon and I love our midday naps. And if you're like us, that's good news because you're not alone. It's We're not alone. People like Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, and Stephen King are also known to be nappers. There's no reason to feel guilty when we allow ourselves to snooze. And that's one of the things we love about our sponsor, Nap Jitsu. Nap Jitsu is a new way to recharge our bodies and our brains, and they are committed to changing the culture around rest and napping. Nap Jitsu's natural supplements were made by people who know how it feels to be tired and productive. Their patent pending formulas have natural ingredients like B vitamins, guarana, and ginseng to give you a boost of energy without any crash later. And each Napjitsu product provides brain boosting nootropics to unlock steady energy right when you need it. The result, your peak performance all day long. And their supplements at Napjitsu are at Napjitsu, easy for me to say, are packaged into small packets so you can take them wherever and whenever you might need an energy boost. For a limited time, you can receive 30% off your first purchase when you go to napjitsu.com slash SBS. Go to napjitsu.com slash SBS for 30% off your first purchase today. That's N-A-P-J-I-T-S-U dot com slash SBS. And our thanks to Napjitsu for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, help me out here. How, how do I manage my expect? How do you manage your expectations of other people? How, what have yeah. you learned? Yeah. Well, the, the one thing I've learned is that, you know, if you go after it hard, uh, you know, it, it often doesn't work out when you try to really go after and, and, and tell somebody how they're doing it wrong or they're not getting it done. So, so I, yeah, this I, much I I've do, learned. Yeah, 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 that's right. I learned that a long time ago. So, so you do have to kind of change the frame. And the one thing I, I tend to rely on a lot in my business career is, you know, when you want to criticize, you know, you look in the mirror and when you want to praise, uh, you look out the window, you know, those analogies, right? So it's always looking inward first, because I think that's where as managers, that's where it all starts. And even like I used to tell my managers and supervisors, look, if they wanted to fire somebody, I say, well, this is a failure on our part. On our part. We, Everything's we, a management we, failure. Yeah, That's right. We either, we hired the wrong person or we didn't train them correctly. Uh, you know, something came up. Sure. Now, unless or we know. didn't fire them fast enough. I mean, like, yeah, like yeah, any of those correct. things, but that's, that's on you. Right. Yep. It's on us. So I, you know, looking inward, you know, the, the first thing I try to ask myself is that there's actual performance and then uh, uh, an ideal that we have in our head. And we we all have this about ourselves too. Yep. And, you know, are we judging others on our actual performance or on an ideal that we have in our head, right? And th it's important to try to, to ask yourself that question to start here, I think. And this on the, on the same note, are you disappointed in the ideal version of this other person or what they are really capable of? Because if, it, if it's like you, you're, if you're comparing them against this ideal, um, you know, 
it, it's, it's impossible. You're setting yourself up for failure. So you have to look at what their capacities are, um, you know, their huh. experience, their training, because it, those are those are things that are going to help you figure out why it didn't get done, why they disappointed you. Um, and, you know, for this example, let's say some project, they missed some goal or something like yeah. that. Didn't, yeah, didn't yeah, follow yeah. through something like that. Um, and then I, I, I keep asking myself these questions. Did I communicate my expectations clearly? Right. Because I'm running them off and burning a mile a minute. To, I got 10 things on my head and I'm like, Hey, can you get this done? Da, da, da. Did I really go through it with them? Did I, set clear deadlines better better yet did we set them together yeah right because if you just give a date yeah well, they're yeah. gonna they're often gonna say yes but really can they do it so you it's better to say what when can you have that to me by and let them when, let them be participate in yeah. in the commitment yeah yes, like my huge. my my biggest points of frustration are are twofold one is if let's say i'm working on a project with someone and and we're both in it together Right. Okay. And I realize at many points during it, wow, you know, I, this is like 70, 30, 80, 20, the whole way. Like I, I'm doing more now. Yeah. I, you know, is that on them or is that on me? Is it me saying I, I want to make sure I, cause how would I, how do I feel when I'm in a project where it's flipped and I'm doing 30 uh, and the yeah. other person's doing 70? I don't like that. So, yeah. so to, to truly aim for 50, 50 is almost impossible to hit, right? It's, it's, um, unless yes, you somehow it build, unless you build a system that doesn't allow one person to get ahead of the other, right? Which I yeah. don't know if that would be well, a good thing or not, I think, but yeah, I would say the ideal system is one that it fluctuates and yes. you're, you're both aware of, of that fluctuation and you both respect it. And it, yes. and it tends to balance itself out. Well, um, it, when it tends right? to balance itself out is fine. Where, yes. when I have a problem is when it's just always, you know, yeah. at, at best 60, 40 and sometimes worse than that. And I understand, I mean, I project in, I don't necessarily understand, but I, I I'll project into, you know, the other person's mindset of okay, uh, and by the way, the, I am I am the, I don't just so everybody here knows that there is nothing about our partnership between you and me, Shannon. That oh, yeah. that I am uh, that I am relating to here. <laughs> I think we have that balance. At, we do at certain times. Yeah, at different times. Maybe doing yes, doing more than others, but then it it tends to balance out. It does, and and neither of us are hesitant about. Asking the other person, can you do this? Can you get it done for us? That's right. Yeah. Can, yeah. Could you take, can you take care of this? Can you take care of that? But but to your point, I think that uh, we, the people like us, if you don't see things kind of getting done, and, and correct me if if I don't want to put words. No, in you're putting the right words. You, you you step you, you just, stepped over my thought, but I think you're going to finish yeah. it for me. Yeah. You just do it. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, well, OK, that's not happening. I'm just going to go ahead and get this done. Well, it, go I do. But part of that is because I know it needs to be done. But also I know. also if I'm being perfectly honest and, and bearing my soul here, part of it is because I see myself as the person that gets stuff done when no one else does. Yeah. And so like it, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Some of that is is a delusion, right? Yeah, of you know course that. it's a delusion. Yes. Right. You it's know, a, it's a way we t we we create this story in our head to help Correct. us be successful. I, I Correct. I, I'm aware of that. Right? But right. and the frustration that I that I came here complaining about today is definitely something that drives my success at times. Yeah. Yes. Right? Cuz it's like, That's well, good. nobody else is going to do it. You know, I'm going to freaking make it happen. And then I go make it happen. And it's not yeah. hard. It just takes work and focus and discipline. And and I think and I think that's a that's you know, I said there were two things that drive me crazy. Maybe it really is just one, but it it the other side of it is times. If yeah. we say we're going to meet at I know. at 10 a.m. and you're not there, especially if we're meeting with like a partner or something, you know, like oh, a, yeah. it's somebody that's oh, not uh, not yeah. you know internal to our organization. Right. And again, I say yeah. you, but I don't mean you. But yeah, you know, if, if if I'm if it's like if we're supposed to meet. Why is this difficult? Like, that's really something that I am flabbergasted by. It's like we all have the ability. We all have these calendars everywhere. How hard is it to just make sure you're there? Or if you can't be there to send up a flare ahead of time, like, oh, something happened. I can't do this. And I get that we all, me included, 
have yeah. times when we flake out on things like it happens. Those, I think those but the are, consistency of that is is where I really start to lose it. If there is a consistency of not showing up on time and and not valuing your time or your partners or vendors or whoever's yeah, time. Right. Yeah. Those are big indicators that things are not going to go right down the road. Mm hmm. And you're right. I would, yeah, these are two very yeah. separate problems. I think. Yes, those are that. That is a big issue. I, I that drives me crazy too. Yeah. And I like to flush that stuff out with that. We've had shows about the working agreement before. Yes. Uh, and you know you can set people. Uh, not that you're setting them up to fail. No, but, you're but test, you can you're test. testing. Yes. You're testing that because yeah. you know you're going to do a bunch of work here, and I want you to commit. Uh, to at the very minimum, let's work out this agreement in a, in a time frame that we both can agree on. Yeah, and let's be on time and get it done. And if you can't, I can't. I mean, I, the dozens and dozens of times, ideas and and projects that I've started have ended at the working agreement because the other party cannot get it done, and that has saved me in many many hours of frustration and and many many uh, dollars yeah. uh, uh th tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars because when you're ready to commit you need to make sure other people are it's not to say that back to where you started here it's it's not that i'm really good at it it's just i i like you grind it out each day i know it's not the grand gesture that makes me successful it's the daily it's the daily step grind toward yeah. success and and checking off the little time little things on my to did list that i got done that's yeah, it i i saw a post on facebook actually it was from ryan Stuman, the hardcore closer we had oh, on yeah. the show years ago he posted something it was just last week where he, he he told the story two separate stories one of a friend who's of his who's a billionaire one of his, a friend of his who's a professional athlete and both of them said you know People ask me what the secret is to my success, and the story is boring. It's the little yes. things that I do. You know, the athlete, I, I just learned how to – I started working out when I was 19 years old, and I never stopped. You know, the, the, the athlete said, I never went from being, you know, 200 pounds overweight to – being this, you know, picture of model fitness and all this. He's like, yeah, I, I just, yeah. I just, I just kept it. I just do it every day. And the billionaire was like, yeah, I don't have any, any special secret. He's like, I learned how to make a little bit of money. And then I made a little bit more and then I made a little bit right. more. And it's really boring. He's like, I have the most boring, you know, riches stories. Like I didn't, it's, I didn't come from rags. He's like, my parents right. had a little bit of money, you know, and he's like, and I just figured it out, but it's boring. Nobody wants to hear those yeah. stories. But from the outside, it looks like magic. It looks like magic because there's nothing, there's no one thing. People yeah. want the magic pill, right? Tell like, me what to say. What is the idea that made you a billionaire? Nothing. There is nothing. Nothing. Right? nothing. Yeah. It's That's the it. work. It's, <laughs> it's the, the work. work. Yeah. Well, yeah, we talk yeah. about when people come to us and this is where the working agreement, I'm glad you brought that up into this because it really is a good litmus test to kind of, yeah. like you said, smoke out any of those problems. But it, you know, people come to us individually and even collectively like, hey, can you, I have this great idea. Can you, you know, sprinkle your magic fairy dust on it? And it's like, no. Yeah, there's, there's no, no, I can't because I don't have any. I never have. The only thing I know how to do is, is get up and do it. Yeah. And any time. Which I is the magic fairy dust, by the way. Yeah, that's it. That is. <laughs> and, and I can look back and, and even up to just a few years ago when I had to pull somebody through, yeah, I still do it because I get excited about an idea or a concept and I'm like, okay, yeah, I could be involved in this. And, yeah. and, and if I have, I, I look back and see where did it fail? It failed at the beginning when I had to kind of pull them through getting the working agreement done or mm. like they did, like you're talking about, they were not on time frequently indicators that I should have, uh, uh, should have set off kind of alarm bells and said, Hey, you know what? I don't know if this is going to work. And kind of leads me to my next point is the, I think the first thing you have to do it, taking on this, okay, person that's not following through, whether they work for you or whether they're a business partner is, is, uh, Ask yourself, what role did I play in this failure? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it fair. is because you, we all do. Oh, I, Whether it, this we is absolute. Yeah. You know, yeah. even yeah. if it's just keeping whatever the scenario is, the employment arrangement, yeah. the partnership, the whatever, keeping yes. it going is your yeah. choice every day and my, or my yeah, choice if, every and, day. And, and, yeah. So if someone's late, like, you know, things happen, of course. Of course. If you're late one time, okay, great. No problem. You're late a second time. Well, but if you're consistently late, it's our responsibility as a leader, as a partner, as an employer to say, 
I am, my understanding of you being late is that you don't want to be, either be here, you don't want to be involved in this project. And uh, if it's, and, and then you just need to say, if it continues, I, I don't think we should continue. Yeah. And you give them the choice. And if they can go, you know what? I'm just, I'm, I'm a late person or whatever. I'll, I'll make an effort. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah. But if they continue to do it, you have to make a change because I tell you that stuff is going to bleed over into everything else that you want to, much, much harder things that you're going to have to achieve later. Yeah. Whether they work for you or whether you're trying to start a business with them or a partnership, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I think that it is important to, uh, to 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 catch those things early, and it's our fault if we don't do it. There's no hundred you know, percent. No, as yeah. you're sitting here, or as I'm sitting here, and you're saying this, I'm thinking about you know the the recent failures that I've had. Not all of them, <laughs> but you know some of the recent ones. In the past couple of years, and it's like, oh man, he's totally right. Like it, I, I saw these things, and I just let it go because I was it, yeah. th- because, and it, it's a it's a double edged sword. The the enthusiasm that I have, which I know many entrepreneurs have, right? You yeah. you at some points you need that enthusiasm to just plow forward when other people might say that seems stupid, that doesn't make sense, and some to, to be fair. Not every time that I plow forward is a smart time, like, but some of yeah. the times have been not even the majority, but enough of a, oh, a you know, a yeah, sizable minority of them have worked yeah. out. And so I get to sit here and say these things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but good. but that enthusiasm is a double edged sword because it it's what gets me into trouble because like you, you know, you even recently, you know, you said you pulled somebody through a, the, the working agreement process only to find out whatever, six months, a year, two years later, whatever. A year, yeah, it, a year later and, yep. and a lot of money later, yep. this person bailed on the project and left me in the lurch. And you could and, see uh, and you kn- you could I see it, it looking backwards. Just, yep. yep. And and I can see it with this this other project that I that, you know, kind of came to mind as you were saying that. It was like, oh man. Gosh, all, all the signs were there and I chose to ignore them. And that's, and I, and I, I say it specifically that way. I chose to ignore them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's, it's also part of that, um, boy, I can't remember the phrase, but it's being overly optimistic. Mm -hmm. It's thinking that because you've had some success in the past, you could overcome these things and, and you could make up for these problems. And, you know, it doesn't mean that that the person is is bad or that they're you know we all have faults well and that's the flip side to this is is we cannot expect perfection out of anyone ourselves others so there will be these these faults that that we have to overlook or overcome or both and and so the trick is you know like like we're both sitting here looking backwards saying oh well that partnership shouldn't ever i should never have let it get as far as it did well okay but yeah. could you take the same lens and apply it to a partnership that succeeded wildly and and all you need to do is change, you know, the binary flip for the end result. Did it succeed or did it fail? And let's just say that it failed. Change no other facts about it. Look backwards. And can you also then find the things where you said, wow, man, in the beginning, I should have seen that. I should have killed this thing right out of the gate. And I guarantee you the answer is you would find them. Yeah. Yeah, it's doing that postmortem, right? Yeah, uh, but postmortem is it. a success as though it were a failure yeah. might lead you down a path that does not reconcile with reality. So yeah. you have to be careful. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So there's no know, magic uh, answers here, is the reality. Yeah. 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 And and I wanna also I wanna take some time today to talk about how you manage people that uh, are look, you know letting you down and you know your expectations so let's say you've looked at everything it's not you've you've you know you're super accountable and you what role you've played in the failure uh you've you've taken a breather you go okay i'm gonna i'm not gonna go into this angry or yep. uh you know i don't want I wanna to fix this and i'm gonna take responsibility to do yeah, it yeah yep. okay and, and i think the first thing you have to do is is kind of create a roadmap whether it's in your head or you write it down of what what you want to achieve right is uh, with meeting with this person is it just that you want them to be on time is that uh you know this project you want to meet these benchmarks or whatever um and and then i think it's important when you meet with them to acknowledge the role that you contributed to the failure failure. Cause you're, then you, 
it's it's kind of starting with a uh you're kind of taking it on yourself a little bit. Yeah. And I think it allows them to relax. So it opens them up to this discussion that you're about to have with them instead of getting, being on the defensive where they're not willing to listen. Oh, um, I like this. Yeah. So you're right? both on the same side of the desk. Like yeah, we like, have hey, a problem I'm, to solve together that yeah, we have, we that, solve that we yeah. have perpetuated. That's right. Yeah. I, yep. And if it's like the time thing, you go, you know, I should have told you, three weeks ago that it was really bothering me that, that yep. you were not on time on a regular basis. I should have. It's my fault. That's and my then fault. you yep. give them a chance to talk. And you know, the thing is most people have good intentions. Absolutely. Most people are not trying to disappoint you. I would say the right. opposite. They're, they're, they're <laughs> trying to impress you. Yeah. Especially if you work for them or they work for you. Sorry. Yeah. Either way. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they're going to be, hard on themselves. I, I would argue we could do a whole show about people that aren't on time. It, it's a self-esteem problem. Mm. Uh, and the these folks are typically going to be much harder on themselves than you are. So I don't know that there's a lot of value in you being hard on them. It's, it's more like, look, let's get on the same side of the table and see if we can solve this. And if we can't, then it's, uh, comes back to us to end it or to change it or whatever. Yeah. Um, right, so, right, so, right. You know, Get out of that. I'm going to punish anybody, you know, and, and use I statements like, Hey, I, you know, I'm disappointed that, that you're late all the time, or I'm sure. disappointed you didn't achieve X or you didn't hit these, these benchmarks that hopefully you and I agreed on, you know, last month. Um, and then, and you just, then you just got to be quiet and listen to the other person, let hear what they have to say about it. Well, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. You know, maybe they're going to say, well, I didn't have the tools to, to get the job done, or I didn't have access to, uh, whatever this person. So they may have some real valid thing. And the failure may be that they is, they didn't communicate to you. Right. Sure. You, you yeah. could just be sitting there thinking this guy's just messing around, not getting anything done, but it could be like, Hey, I'm waiting on this or this department isn't helping me or that person, you know, is whatever. And so the, the, there's still a problem because you need to say, look, uh, I, I need you to communicate when there's these problems as soon as you hear about them. So I'm not disappointed or we as a team, let's say, are not disappointed when we, when we can't make these, uh, you know, set the system in place and can't hit these benchmarks. Um, very important. And, and as you're talking to this person, you want to keep talking about how you're disappointed with the outcome, not the person, right? Yes. It's not them. It's just like talking to your kids. I love you. It's your behavior. I don't like, <laughs> so you can't, you're not going to say that to your employee maybe, but uh, you know, it's, it's the behavior. That's a problem. Uh, the system has got to be tweaked here, you know, lean into the system concept and, and really tell them. I like it. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, and lastly, you know, what are the expectations moving forward? You got to make sure they understand it. It's like, Hey, okay. I thank you for being upfront, telling me this, my expectation is that you're going to let me know as soon as there's a problem. Otherwise, you're going to be able to meet the deadline that you and I just set together. Matter of fact, I agreed on your deadline. You know, that you told me on this date. You we told me. On, That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we put it on the count. And sometimes somebody will throw these numbers out or these dates. And I'll be like, well, I don't know. The, the, hey, let, let's bump it a couple of days. Let's or, push it back a few. Yeah. You got a holiday right. coming up. Let's do this. I don't want you to yep. be with you. So you, you got to be set realistic expectations or you're just going to be disappointed over. Well, there's, I think there's a whole show or at least a segment to be done on all of us learning to set realistic expectations. Yeah. I, I, right. I certainly catch myself in those scenarios and I'm I getting better myself. at it, yeah. but, yeah. but it, yeah, yeah I had a yeah. meeting recently with a staffer and I needed to do something to kind of talk about their compensation package and all this other stuff. And it was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I know I don't like saying this, but I'm going to need two weeks. And, you know, it was like, we have a holiday, we have this, that, and yeah. the other thing. And I, 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 I'd love to tell you that I'm going to get it done in two days, but I, I don't think that's realistic. And so yeah, especially I, I need to be business. realistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good. Yeah. yeah that's it, good. And it and was, you want them to do the same, right? You absolutely. Want them to tell you. Yeah. And they thanked yeah. me. They were like, I, 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 everything you said is correct. I wish you could tell me right now what this is going to all look like. But I understand. I appreciate that you're, you know, committing the time to this and and wanting to do it the right way. And I understand that, you know, circumstances dictate that this takes longer than either of us would like. It doesn't make me happy, but I, I, I am respectful that, you know, and thankful that you were 
that you acknowledge that up front and didn't overcommit. I was like, oh, yeah. So that's good. It's hard it's though. Good. Like, it, it is you know, we don't like to disappoint. No one. No. Just like, you know, the people that we're talking about here don't like to disappoint. We don't, I don't like to disappoint either. In fact, I, I, I think if we, you know, get lay back on the couch, I think we could go all the way down and it's all about, I don't want to disappoint. And that's what keeps right. me pushing forward. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think if, if you're, the leader, the employer, the business owner, or in some position of power and, and the other person that you're working with is kind of deferring to you because of that, it, it really would behoove you to put yourself in, you know, in their seat uh, mentally as much as you can, because they're not, you know, they may say things or try to do things because of that power factor that's yeah. just there and maybe not. So you want to be like, you know, when you tell them, Hey, give yourself an extra couple of days, it really buys you some credibility. I think that, um, yeah, you know, that you're being you realistic. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. I think yeah. that's great. And then I think you give them another chance. I'm, I'm just a huge believer in that. Yeah. And, and then you ask them, Hey, what can I do, uh, before we leave? What can I do to help you achieve this? Right. What, what can I do? Do you, do you want an alarm? Do you want an email? Do you want a text? Do you know how to set the alarm on your calendar so you're not late? I mean, wh whatever yeah. it is. Again, it? What, what is to, it? Yeah. What trying to I help mean? them down. But if you, if they let you down again, I think you have to really point it out again. Say, hey, this is serious. And if they work for you, it's like this may impact your future with, with our business. With our business, right? yeah. yeah. And, and, if it, and if it's something that doesn't correct, correct it, then, you know, I've had people that I've tried to push into doing other things and they have failed miserably, but it didn't take away how good they were at other things. I see what you're saying. Yeah. The things that they do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I've made the mistake. It's like that Peter principle where, yeah. you, you know, you, you tried to push people into doing new things and when they can't handle it, you, they wind up leaving and you're like, wow, but they were so great at this other thing. Now they're gone. So now I always try to have the conversations. Okay. Hey, this doesn't work out, but it doesn't take away from the fact that you are a great technician, salesperson, whatever. So I want you to refocus your energies on this and, you know, become even better or learn more about X or get your certification in X. Yeah. So, you know, don't lose those assets uh, just because of a failure of, of one thing. One, one aspect um, of an asset. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, one yeah. aspect. So, and if it all goes to hell, then, you know, you, you go back and listen to our hiring and firing show, show and, <laughs> and, and, and you, you need to make a change. I mean, it's just yeah. what it is. No, that happens. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, yeah. You or end the partnership or not start a partnership if all these indicators and red flags are going up. So it, it, it's a really important topic. And it's one that I'll bet you, uh, if we had a group of employees sitting here, they would uh, often, they, they have the flip side of this conversation about um, unrealistic unrealistic expectations. They don't oh, for me sure. the right tools. They don't give me enough money. My budget was terrible. All these kinds you know, of things. All those things are true. Yeah. So yeah. to be in a, to be a, a successful leader, you, you you need to know recognize that, be yeah. self aware that they're thinking like that, and get on their side of the table and go look. How do we do it together? It's not just me dropping goals and benchmarks and saying get it done because that's that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, get get on their side with them. You know, use that teamwork approach, and uh, I think you'll find a lot more success. Yeah. Hey, I I agree. I agree. Thank you. This was good to talk this yeah, through. Yeah, it was great. I love talking it through too. It always helps me to, uh, yeah. you know, put things in, in writing. And, you know, if, if you have tips for us uh, that we can share on the show, feedback at businessshow.co or go to businessshow.co slash Facebook. Get over to the small business support group and post your comment there. We would love to uh, talk with you about it there. Yeah, the business therapy group. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you, Shannon. This was a fantastic yeah, episode here. Thanks to our sponsors. Make sure to visit Coinbase.com slash SBS and Napjitsu.com slash SBS. Let us know what you think. Feedback at businessshow.co and uh, keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.